Hello, the millennials are not doing business as usual. They are not waiting for jobs and they can be home all day making enough to live a decent lifestyle. On this special series on One on One, we'll be chatting with young people who are now employers of labor just by using their mobile devices. My name is Elsie Godwin. First up is this conversation with Olufemi Oguntamu, who touches on his journey to being a social influencer, founding a digital marketing agency in Nigeria, and the challenges of being the bridge between the brands and the influencers. Femi is a social media strategist, the lead consultant at Pennsylvania Africa, and convener of the annual widely spoken social media conference, Handle is Africa, which is dedicated to revolutionizing how social media is used, consumed, developed, deployed effectively for certain desired results. He's one of the few social media entrepreneurs who quickly identify and explore the untapped opportunities in the social media space. Olufemi and his team have worked on a number of social media projects and campaigned for top brands in Nigeria, which includes Bolt Nigeria, MTN Nigeria, Cold Stone Nigeria, Federal Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Nokia, Wema Bank, Mastercard, Trace Nigeria, and many more. He also worked as a brand influencer for Google Nigeria, Microsoft Nigeria, Pepsi, and so much more. Thank you, Femi, for joining us at Plus TV Africa. Yes. Okay, Hi, so yes, at um, 28, you are not just an influencer. You run a digital agency. How did it all start for you? Um, so um, it started from me being an influencer. And uh, while I was in school, I was, I mean, I was popular in school. I was popular in campus. And I had um, um, a Blackberry back then. And uh, you know, then, if you had a BlackBerry, you were probably like a big boy or something. Mm -hmm. so, so I had a BlackBerry back then, and I had so many contacts on my BBM then. It was like 2,000 contacts on my phone. So I sent them um, broadcast messages back then and all that. And um, when I sent a broadcast message, automatically you can tell that almost everyone on campus would, see, would get that message. It was just more like, oh, I'm just having fun. Oh, there's this dinner happening today or oh, tomorrow night, guys, come through. I just send the broadcast and all that. But people started coming to me to beg me to send broadcasts for them, and I was mm. wondering. I mean, so I was doing that. I would do that for church. They would have maybe crusade. I would do that for clubhouse. I would do that for dinner, faculty dinners and all that. But then I then realized that, okay, it means that there is something there is something I have that these guys need, you know. So they, cop, they, they keep coming to me. So I decided to start charging them. And um, I mean, when I say charging them, it wasn't like I was collecting money then. I just started getting um, BIS, and it was called BIS. So mm -hmm. I started telling them to recharge my BIS for me. Then I'll send your BC. Then I'll put mouthpiece. When I send the BC, I'll just put mouthpiece at Penza. So um, I did that for a while, and I didn't realize that I had so many recharge cards, so many, mm -hmm. um, so many BIS, uh, you know, but I didn't have cash. You know, it was just okay. more like I had so many, I mean, I had credit. I can call anybody, I can do anything, but I didn't have cash. So. That's how I evolved into making it, you know, cash payment. So when did it become a full-fledged business? For yeah, you? so it was, it was I mean, that's, so it, was, it started as a full-fledged business in 20... So I registered in 2015, but officially started business, like business 2016, 2017, real business as an agency. Okay. But I did not, I'd been an influencer for a while, from my school days to service year, even while I was working, because I did, I did work 9 to 5 too. Mm -hmm. But while I was working 9 to 5, I had, I had my side runs also, mm -hmm. influencer, you know. But I started being an agency fully in 2016, 2017. Okay, what was the transition like for you? It, I mean, you were just enjoying yourself as an influencer yeah. and all that, and then suddenly it's real business. Yeah. Did you have to go through some form of training? Did you do personal research? What was it like for you? So, it, so it was more of it was more of me trying to see what more I can do because I realized that I think I had overflowed the entire influencer thing. I, I knew how it worked, and I knew, and I was getting tired of today a brand calls me the next day another brand of the same. Um, uh, what's it called? Calls me, and mm -hmm. you know, I just felt I needed something more, more structured, you know. So, and I, I looked at the future of what what I was doing back then, and I felt the future is only the future would definitely be to have my own um, empire, you know, mm -hmm. and all that. So it wasn't it wasn't an easy thing because it meant I had to drop a lot of jobs. And you know how these things work now. This one will call you for this amount. I will call you for that amount, and all that. I was broke for some point because it took a very 
tough decision for me. You know, it was a very tough decision for me to make. But I had to do it because I was looking at the future, not the now. So, mm. so it was more of me trying to evolve into becoming a, a serious brand, a serious company, where we have our own clientele, you know, and not just get peanuts from, from several brands. And so, I mean, it was just me moving, moving myself and the brand to uh, the top of the chain, basically. And I, even as an influencer, I had a staff. I had mm -hmm. an office as an influencer. Okay. So I was not just a normal influencer. I was an influencer with, will I use the word packaging? Okay. <laughs> I was an influencer with maybe packaging. I had mm -hmm. an office. I had a staff and all that. But with time, I evolved into getting more staff and mm. you know, a bigger space for office and all that. So, I mean, we, we, we're still trying and pushing and trying to see how best we can. So what does it mean to be an influencer with packaging? Because, I mean, there are so many people out there that want to be an influencer. Yeah. So what does it mean to actually get the best out of being an influencer? So, so the first thing I tell people is that being an influencer necessarily does not, you don't have to, uh, what's the word? You don't, it's not about you, your followers. It's not about your 100,000 of followers, 200,000 of followers. It's much more than just followers. It's mm -hmm. more of your engagement. And um, what I've realized, from the DJC side, even before I got into the DJC side, I realized that most, most brands want to deal with the personality and not just the platform. Okay. But the problem most, most um, um, influencers have is that they think they have the platform, they think they have the followership, but people don't know them. People mm. don't know who you are. People don't know who, I mean, who is LC, you know? Mm. So they, don't, they need to know you, they need to know what you stand for, what you can do, what you cannot do, you know, your, your, your interest and all that. They need to be able to identify with the personal brand much more that is when they'll be able to engage you for whatever, you know. So that's the problem. So for me then, I, why I said I was a package influencer was that I had a personal brand. People mm -hmm. knew me as Penza, you know. So whether I had 10,000 followers, or I had 1,000 followers, I had 200 followers, people knew me even out of social media. So mm -hmm. I was involved in many stuff, mm -hmm. volunteering for different brands and all that. So it was even easy for me to get, to get engaged in, in jobs because people knew me. So I think that's the problem most influencers have now. People just buzz me randomly and say, oh, they have... Uh, my page, my page is popping. I have followers. It's beyond that, mm -hmm. who are you as a person? What okay. do you do? You know. So the personality matters. Really matters, actually. Okay. So how would you say the digital space is affecting Nigeria in terms of employment and unemployment? Because I, sometimes I sit down and imagine if there wasn't a social media, and the likes of digital marketing and influencer marketing, these people enjoying from this line of business now yeah. would probably be out of job also. So how would you say it's affecting that space? So I would say that. Um, for me, I, I mean, when I was in school, there was nothing like social media marketing or whatever. So I wouldn't have thought that I would be doing this today. So I, while I graduated, before I graduated, I was thinking I was going to become an OAP. I mean, I interned in some companies back then, media companies. And um, I also thought I was going to become an actor. I did auditions. I did all that. But I mean... Social media happened, and I would say that it's, it's, a, it's really a great, a great thing, you know, mm. in this our age and time. I, it, it has helped people. I mean, there's so many people who just stay at home and with their laptop and their phones and they're cashing out. So I would say that um, it has really helped um, the employment rates. You know, people don't have to wear shirt and tie every, anymore. People now, even from universities, they already, they already have a niche, they already know what they want to become via social media. Mm -hmm. So I would say that it's done a lot. It's really done a lot. And... Um, but again, I need to also let people know that because some people are making money off social media doesn't make everybody, you know, dive into it. Just mm -hmm. like blogging. Not everybody can become a blogger, a successful blogger. Mm -hmm. So you need to know what works for you, okay. not because it's working for other people. Okay, so one of the services your organization offer is influencer marketing amongst yeah. every other thing, right? How often would you say we get this line of marketing right in Nigeria, especially on return on investment? Oh, so what I would say is that um, I tell all brands, I mean, but there's some brands that come to me and, I, and they, they want to do influencer marketing campaign. I get the brief, I look at the brand and all that, and I advise them, you don't need this now. Mm. Most people don't tell you that. They get your money, they collect your money, and do everything you have to do. They, they engage influencers, they tweet, they trend, they do all that. But eventually, your ROI is not, is not assured. Mm. So ROI now might not mean that, I mean, your return on investment might not mean that you will get a return at that moment or that period. It might take some months or even years. And some campaigns will just be for top of mind awareness. So okay. the first question I ask clients is that what exactly, what exactly is your... Um, are you looking at what exactly do you tend to gain from this campaign? If you say you want to make sales, we look at the campaign strategy and look at your product itself. And sometimes I tell clients, go back and do your own work in-house before you come out to do, you know, to, to, to market your product. Because your product might not even be ready mm. for people to, to you know, 
um, buy into it and all that. So that's why some brands come. I mean, you meet some, some brand managers and they tell you, I spent a whole lot, I spent millions on this project, I'm tired and all that. And you're wondering, what did you spend money on? Were you advised rightly? So it's not just about engaging influencers. It's about, are, are you ready to engage influencers? And mm. to what end exactly do you want to engage them for? So okay. I feel this, those things are what we need to look All into. Right. So people like you are the bridge between the influencers and the brand. Yeah. Now, what would you say are the challenges that comes with being in that position and making sure everybody's happy, the brand is happy, the influencer is happy? What is that one challenge you're facing right now? Okay, so the challenge, truly, I mean, the challenge is um, um, the budget, okay. basically. The challenge is the budget. We, we don't have an issue with, um, with the influencers doing their own part of the job because for us to even engage an influencer, we have to be sure that the influencer um, can give us, you know, um, can give us what we expect. Okay. But much more, the budget for that influencer has been the issue. Okay. And most clients will pay you peanuts and they will want they want the whole world, you know, that deliverables are so much, but then they are paying little. But then on the other side, the influencers, the influencers don't understand that we are fighting for them. Mm. You know, so this challenge is, at times it looks like we are doing too much for what we are being paid for. And we are wondering that even this little you are saying, it took a lot of fight to get this money. So I think the major thing is, is budget. Mm -hmm. And number two is um, the brand wanting way more. I think it's still on that budget because if the brand wants way more than what is expected, then they should pay way, way more, you know, better. So I feel the problem is just budget. If the budget issue can be sorted, which I don't know if it will be sorted anytime soon, you know, okay. because I mean, when you're trying to, when you're trying to, um, what was the word to use now? When you're trying to undo the situation of budgeting and trying to get um, big budget approved for influencers, you realize that some other influencers or young ones coming up can collect peanuts to even do way more mm -hmm. than these guys. And mm -hmm. the brands don't understand that. Like I said, it's more of personality than the than numbers the of followers mm -hmm. than the platform. So they will tell you, oh, Mr. A and Mrs. B can do this, or they will offer to do this at lesser amount. Mm -hmm. So why are you charging so much? Okay, you are just time, saying, before I let you yeah. go, would you say that works at the end of the day or you still have challenges handling it when you go with what they think works? So I mean, it, well, Truth be told, right, we, we've been able to customize different packages for different brands. Yeah. So what you have, we'll do what, we have, what you have. If it can't work, we'll tell you it can't work. We've had times where we turn down jobs because it can't work. Mm. But I mean, when you, when you tell us this is what you have, and we tell you okay, this is what we can do with what you have, I mean, we've tried to customize packages and we'll be fine. We'll okay, be fine. briefly before you go, I mean, Handed yeah. Africa is coming. Just yeah. very briefly, why did you start this? I mean, we're going to the third edition right now. What should we expect? Okay, for Andulit, um, for Andulit Africa, um, we had first edition 2017, the second last year, and now we're having a third edition. And I would say that uh, the last two editions have been exhausted, you know, and um, we, we can only hope for better. So last two years, the, fir the first edition, we had a smaller hall. Last year, we had a bigger one, and now we are even having much more bigger, much more bigger hall. So it's not like, um, oh, we're cashing out, or there's this money we're getting, but I just feel like, the platform is very impactful, so we just have to do way more, you know. So I would say that people should expect better this year. It's not been easy. In fact, between you and I, I thought this year that we might not even do it because last year we spent a whole lot and it was really stressful. But then, looking at um, testimonials for, and feedback from people who have attended, we feel like, okay, let's keep doing this, you know. It's a good platform. So I would say that for this year, we intend to bring in more, you know, uh, panelists that people want to listen to, people respect on social media, and um, aside the panel sections, we are also looking at infusing a few things into the program to events to make people enjoy themselves better, you know. And um, yeah, basically, um, Andrew Tafika is coming May, May 17, 2019, a rental hotel, and we hope uh, everyone is going to have a nice time. All right, thank you so much, Benza, for being here with us at Plus TV Africa. Thank you so much. Welcome back. This is Plus TV Africa. Let's move right into the next conversation with Pamilleri as he tells us his controversial personality is a product of deliberate strategy. Pamilleri Adegoke is a marine engineer, digital marketer, food critic, and brand influencer. He's also co-owner of Bluefix Communications. He's the founder of the Give a Girl Child a Pad initiative. <laughs> Hello, Pamilari. Thank you for joining us at Plus TV Africa. Hi, uh, Elsie. Okay, Pamilari, there's a lot of controversies around your personality as an influencer. Why is that? <laughs> I don't know. I think it works and it's yours, probably because I'm an influencer. Mm -hmm. And it's just news and bands. 
Okay, so is it a strategic move for you to always be talked about? Um, basically, yeah, the thing about social media is you need to understand your audience, number one, mm -hmm. and you need to actually understand these people on social media. Okay. You need to know what they want, and mm -hmm. you have to give it to them the way they want it. Okay. I am the kind of person, I think of controversy is yours for me, mm -hmm. um, but anything familiar, everybody, everybody jumps on it, and familiar is trending. Okay. So I think it works for me. So I think it's a good strategy for me to continue using it. So now you've mentioned strategy a lot. Are you saying the whole trouble you cause on social media is strategy? Trust me, it's, it's in, intentional. If I tell you want to train right now, I know how to. I know what to tweet. I know how to post. I know what to post. Mm. So, so um, let us into your world of strategizing because people see influencers or digital marketers as just putting out content on social media. What's how, how what was the amount of strategizing that goes into every tweet or every Instagram post you put out there? I'm number one. Um, I, like I said earlier, um, you need to understand your audience. Mm -hmm. So, um, if I'm to tweet like you, mm -hmm. if I'm to tweet on your own platform, people are your audience will actually know that oh, no, this is not the way I tweets. Okay, you get so, um, for someone like me, I've been able to know these people and understand them. And I know if I'm too serious, they may not take me so serious. Okay, if I'm Posting um, a land advert and I'm just posting like come and buy land though. I may have probably 20 retweets. Okay. But if I'm doing the short skits, I'm wearing the boxer and I'm on the land running up and down, trust me, I'm having 2,000 re retweets. Mm -hmm. Or like um, instead of me just posting and not talk of like, okay, buy land. Mm. So people you need to understand you for who you are mm -hmm. and what your brand stands for. So are you saying your brand or your personality stands for seriousness? Not on seriousness, <laughs> a youthful, a youthful, playful kind of brand personality you get is useful playful enough to describe you well okay so <laughs> growing up what was it you wanted to be my um computer scientist okay but my parents my parents made me study marine engineering okay so it's a different thing from what i wanted to study what my parents wanted me to study and what i'm doing right now so mm -hmm. they are three different things. I guess your parents must be different because you get people saying my parents wanted me to be a doctor, a lawyer, um, an engineer, not necessarily a marine engineer. So how did they think about that? My, my dad. Okay. My dad just wanted a marine engineer as his son. Mm. So, so now that you're a digital marketer and influencer, what, what do they think about it? Um, at first he was engaged it. Um, he stopped talking to me for like six months. Wow. Then six along months. The, yeah, along the line, he, you know, you know, he says, okay, you're not doing bad. You can feed yourself mm. and love. Okay, just do your thing and be happy. Talking so about I, feeding yourself. Sorry uh, to cut you there. I mean, that's one of the things you used to arouse people on social media, right? Yeah. On a good month, how much would you say you make as an influencer? On a very good month. On a bad month enough to <laughs> feed me to fill my car and to pay my house rent. So on a good month? Enough to travel where I want to go to. You, can you give us a figure a range? Enough. <laughs> we want to know how much. I mean, there are people who do not know what they want to do with their lives right now. Not because they did not go to school or because they don't have the certificates, but they aren't just the jobs out there, right? And they think, maybe I should try being a digital marketer. So maybe you giving us that figure would encourage them more. More than quarter of a million. In a, on a bad month. In a bad month, quarter of a million. Okay. All right. So um, for when a brand comes to you to work on any of their projects, what comes to your mind first? Strategy. Okay. And um, the, how, how to speak their language. Mm. So have you had a situation whereby you want this kind of strategy and then the brand says, no, this does not work for our brand? A, a, lo a, a lot of time and it's, it keeps feeling them. It keeps feeling them. Yeah. So, so they, they come back and they're like, okay, I mean, can we just try that? Mm -hmm. you get, and it works. And it works. So yeah. you're saying your strategies are always 100% return on investments. 99%. That's you bragging right now. <laughs> okay, so um, now the relationship between brands and influencers, it's a bit um, dicey, actually because of the money, right? Yeah. So what would you say is the major issue there? Because I know influencers in Nigeria are not being paid as much as their counterparts in the Western world. But with what we are getting here, it's still a case of this is too much, right? What would you say the problem is? I think um, the thing is brands see influencers as, is it not... Inca, is not familiar. Mm -hmm. what, what are you doing? It's not for you to just post on social media. You get, mm -hmm. So they need to actually understand that these people are actually doing a whole lot for them. Mm -hmm. Because the moment I post for you, I'm, your, I'm an ambassador of your company. Okay. Because people 
it's whatever I'm putting out there, that means I'm standing for your brand. Like, guys, this is real. Mm. You get so you should automatically see me as an ambassador for that period yeah, of time. time. So brands need to actually take us so serious. I know that without these people we won't get our words out there. No matter the number of sponsored posts you do, no matter, you, do, you don't know my audience, you don't know this person's audience, sponsor, sponsored ads won't give you that audience. Mm. And the way you want, the way we relate it to the, these people, mm -hmm. your sponsored ad cannot do this for you. Okay. So they need to actually take influencers so serious and I, I would say see finish, if, that, if there's any word like that, mm. they'd be like, oh, after all, it's just social person on, on, on Twitter or mm. on Instagram and like, why will I be paying you this much to just post on, on, on your platform? Okay. But it's, it's, it takes a lot of creativ creativity, a lot of thinking, a lot of, okay, how do I push out this message to these people? Mm. What, what, should, what do, I, do I tell these people? How do I direct uh, this audience to this particular brand page? You get, mm -hmm. so it's a whole lot of more, it, it's a whole lot of things. Okay. And this brand needs to actually take us so serious. Okay, so digital marketing is becoming, um, I mean, it has become a profession on its own. You can actually go to school to study it. Would you say it's something that can really be studied or it's inborn? Um, number one, you have to have a passion for it mm. and then study. Okay. Because if you, if you want to be a digital marketer because you think Mr. Susu -so is making money or because you think, oh, this guy is living the kind of life I want to live, it's just going to be for the meantime. No matter what you know, if it's not your thing, mm. it can actually not, it can never be your thing. Okay. So you have to actually have passion for it, then go for it. Now you mentioned who you know. Who you know doesn't it play a large role in this um, business of influencer marketing? Trust me, it, it plays a large role in, in every occupation okay. or in every profession you want to do. Okay. Who you know, especially in this part of the country. Mm -hmm. You need to know someone that knows someone that knows someone. Mm. So if you know someone at the top, you can easily get your jobs out there. Okay. You can easily get funds, you can easily get connect, blah, blah, blah. So who you know actually works? Mm -hmm. Because if I mean nobody, how do I get a job from Dangote? Yes, your job speaks volume for you, but for how long? Mm. When is, will that job start speaking volume for you? How will a hotel that notice me when it's not even on my page? Mm -hmm. How will a speed notice me when it doesn't even see my tweets? Mm. So who you know, but if an LC knows an hotel can you say, oh, uncle, I have this guy that does this, that does that. Mm -hmm. Hotel does not have to go to my page, but because you've spoken for me, or on, on behalf of, um, like you've put out some words of mouth, some words out there for me, mm. hotel can easily call me like, okay, I'm like, no, let's do something. Mm. Okay, so let's talk about um, the platforms. Yeah. That's um, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. I know you're majorly on Twitter and Instagram. Yeah. So which platform would you say an upcoming influencer should choose and how many is necessary to be classified a particular influencer? Um, I say to people, you, anybody can be an influencer. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not the time, it's on what you're influencing people for. Is it food? Is it fashion? What do you, like, what's your mojo? Have you found your mojo yet? What are you good at? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Pamela is a lifestyle influencer. Okay. Can you be like a lifestyle influencer like Pamela? Can mm -hmm. you can people throw bands at, at you and you take it with good art and not and not start thinking? Mm -hmm. You get? Do you like food so much? Why not start influencing about food? Why not start talking about food? Mm -hmm. Do you like events? Why not pick that and pick that as a niche? Mm -hmm. Do you like traveling? Why not pick that? Mm -hmm. Do you like hospitality? Why not pick that? Okay. Do you like? Uh, what, why not pick that? So, so number one, you have to pick in, um, create a niche for yourself, okay. discover yourself, then go for that. Mm. You get, so no matter the number of followers you have, if you like have 200, create a particular hashtag, mm. start talking about this thing, take it serious, mm -hmm. share it to your friends, tell, tell, tell them, this is my new also, please help me. Tag influencers, use hashtags, to the note, hashtag this, hashtag that, trust me, it will fly. Before mm. you know it, you are getting thousands of followers. Mm -hmm. And, you know, how long does it take you to create a concept for a promotion? Like um, for a brand. Mm -hmm. Once I have the brief, I will do that in five, ten minutes. In five, ten minutes. Maybe that's why people look at it to say, this job is not so hard. I mean, it, it's something they do in five minutes. It's actually not. What takes me five minutes can take someone else two years. Mm. So you are born for it, I guess. I think it's just my thing. It's just Trust your me. thing. It's just my thing. Okay, so um, Instagram is clamping down on influencers. Twitter is doing the same thing. What do you think is the future of digital marketing? In no Nigeria? matter how hard they try, they can't do anything. But we've not, in this part of the country, we've, we are still scratching the surface. Mm -hmm. There is way, way, way longer way to go to. We are still scrapping the surface. We are not even there yet. So Instagram crapping influencers, closing our accounts. Mm. Trust me. What are they tweeting? Mm -hmm. What have, what have they been talking about? Mm -hmm. 
what hashtag are they doing? What trade are they, are they on? I've never had issues with Instagram. I've never had issues with Twitter. Okay. I'm not the only one. There are other lot of people out there that have never had issues. Mm. Why is it only you that has 10 accounts and Instagram is closing down your accounts? Mm. So you, you are something doing something. You are doing something wrong, and these people actually, actually seen it. Mm -hmm. Change your change your device. Change your IP. Mm -hmm. Start something new. Okay. So before I let you go, three advice to anyone who wants to be able to make a living off social media mm -hmm. instead of just being there to watch people making a living. Um, you have to create um create a niche for yourself. Okay. Number one, discover yourself. Mm -hmm. Create a niche, then get yourself a mentor. All right. Thank you so much for talking to us at Plus TV Africa. Thank you. See. That's it on this episode. Stay tuned to Plus TV Africa as we bring you more interesting conversations with digital marketers to inspire you. Don't forget to follow us at Plus TV Africa on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And do subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. My name is Elsie Godwin. See you soon.